Somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. I said, somebody look at your neighbor and say, she finna bring it tonight. And if you ain't got a neighbor, look at yourself and say, she finna bring it to fuck a night. Oh, we gonna jump right into it, because that's how we do it over here. to talk about Bible rituals tonight. A lot of folks want to call me a witch because I work with my ancestors and I work with different spirits according to what I need. Okay, so folks want to want to call me a witch, say I'm doing witchcraft. But I want to ask this question tonight. I want to ask you, where do you think some of your greatest rituals come from? That's right your Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. So when somebody say so, so mad, I'm evil because she do rituals. I want you to ask them this question. I want you to ask them, well, if it's so evil, why do they tell you how to do rituals in the Bible? You just didn't know how to do it. You just didn't know what they were saying. So tonight I have to be the messenger. Oh, I done been in the spirit realm, and I got some spirit information for y'all asses tonight. Okay? Come on and let's do it. My favorite gospel group, the Clark Sisters. Some of y'all done heard about them. The Clark Sisters. They sung a song called, There is a Bomb in Gilead. But I wonder if they really knew what they were singing about. Some of these gospel groups, they sing these songs but some of them, they don't know what they're singing about. Now tonight, I want you to turn your Bibles to Jeremiah 8 and 22. Yes, that's right, Jeremiah 8 and 22. And the scripture says, Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? The Bible says, Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Y'all read the scripture? Well, let me break that down for y'all in case you didn't understand it. I want you to look at the word bomb, B-A-L-M. The word bomb means a fragrant, a fragrant ointment or preparation used to heal or soothe. That's what the word bomb mean. The bomb was made out of different herbs and this bomb was used to heal people, okay? It was used to, to heal people whenever they used it. So in this scripture, Jeremiah says, shit, shit. He said, where is the motherfucker witch doctors? He said, where is the motherfucker witch doctors who know about the herbs? The herbs that can heal the motherfucker people. That's what Jeremiah was asking about. Jeremiah was looking for a healing bomb made out of herbs. And the physician he was looking for wasn't no motherfucking doctor. It wasn't no doctor in a hospital. He was looking for a witch doctor, skilled. Somebody skilled, a witch doctor skilled in making healing bombs for the people. Jeremiah say, if the witch doctor done made the bomb for the people, then why ain't my people recovering? You want to know why the people ain't recovering? Because y'all rather pay these doctors thousands and thousands of dollars. Okay, instead of paying our own skilled witch doctors for a cure to heal your body. Look at your neighbor and say, is there a bomb in Gilead? Yes, there is. But you got to know where to go to get that correct healing for your body. Oh, we're going to do it to motherfucker night. Some folks say, so, so mad I'm the devil. Because I give out money rituals. Okay, I'm the devil because I give out money rituals. Well, your Bible give out money rituals too. You just ain't know what the hell they was talking about in these scriptures. Turn your Bible to Ezekiel 4 and 9. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 9. Oh, we're going to move through it tonight. But I promise you, you're going to be able to get what I'm saying. Even if you got to listen to it two times. Even if you got to listen to this recording three times. You're going to get it to fuck a night. Ezekiel 4 and 9. It say, take thou also unto thee wheat and barley, beans, lentils, millet 
and fitches and put them in one vessel and make the bread thereof according to the number of days that thou shalt lay upon thy side. 390 days shalt thou eat thereof. Somebody say, so, so, madam, can you break that scripture down to me? They say, how is this a money ritual? Well, you got to listen and you got to pay attention to what the scripture is saying. Now, two words that should have stood out to you was the word bread and the word eat. You hear folks say it all the time. I'm about to go make this bread. I've been counting up this bread all day. Even the Bible tell you, give us this day our daily bread. So I want to ask you this question. What does the word bread mean? When the Bible uses the word bread, what does the word bread mean? Bread means money. I'm going to say it again. Bread means money. So when you read Ezekiel 4 and 9 again, if you get some wheat, I'm about to show you what it's saying. If you get some wheat, some barley, some beans, some lentils, millet and fitches, and you put them all together. Okay, you put all of these items together in a vessel. What is a vessel? A bowl or a vase. The scriptures say, and make the bread thereof. Meaning what? These items together will bring you money. You got to know how to read these scriptures. That's what bread mean, money. So when you put these items together in a vessel, this is going to bring you some money. The scriptures say, according to the number of days that thy shall lay on thy side, 390 days thou shall eat thereof. 390 days shall thou eat. We know what the word eat mean. I told you that the word bread means what? That's right, money. So what does the word eat mean? It means to, to receive, to benefit, to reap, or to harvest. So you take these items, put them in a vessel, okay? Put them in a bowl, these herbs that I just named. This will bring you money in your life, but you got to know how to do everything. You just can't put these herbs inside of a bowl. You got to know, you got to know how to speak over these herbs. Okay. You got to, how to, you got to know how to do the proper thing to wake these herbs up. So the ritual that I just gave you right here from Ezekiel four and nine is a money ritual. Yes, it is. I said, it's a money ritual straight out of the motherfucker Bible. Somebody say, so, so madam, you digging now, baby. I just know some things that you don't know. Come on, y'all. I said, come on, y'all. Don't worry about them. Because Wusa, I'm going to break down these scriptures where you can overstand this shit. Because we've been blind for too motherfucking long. Now, if you turn your Bibles to the book of Psalm 51 and 7. Psalms 51 and 7. This scripture is showing us what to use for an aura cleansing bath I'm going to say that again an aura cleansing bath somebody say what what is an aura somebody say what what is your aura your aura is an invisible color of energy that surrounds you your aura represents the state of being that you're in at that time for example some people's aura may be red red symbolizes a dark red, I should say, symbolizes that you're centered and you're grounded. You're self-sufficient and able to survive any circumstance that comes your way. If you have a bright red aura, you are very passionate. You, you are a very sexual person and you are full of energy. And one thing about you, you are very competitive. Now, if you got a clouded, listen to what I'm saying. If your, your aura is very clouded, a clouded red color, this represents a negative energy. You have a deep stated anger that you can't let go of. Some people, they can read auras. Okay, they, they are invisible. It's an invisible energy. But some people are able to see your aura. I can see auras as well. 
Okay, so so that's what a, a aura is. So when we read Psalms 51 and 7, the scriptures go on to say, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. I want you to listen to that again. Read the rest of the scripture and it says, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. What does that mean? When your aura is white, when you, you have the, the color of white surrounding you, when your aura is white, this represents that no corruption or negative energy can penetrate you. A motherfucker try to put a ritual on you, they can't do it. Why? Because you whiter than snow. Your protection is, is on another level. So what this is telling you, this scripture right here, what this scripture in Psalms 51 and 7 is telling you is, this is a bath, okay? This is a bath that you can take when you want to change your situation around. So let's put it together. The scriptures say, purge me, purge me. Purge me means to get rid of, of, of all the unwanted feelings that I get trapped inside of me. To get rid of the memory. Purge means to, to, to get rid of an unwanted feeling, memory, or condition. To cleanse, to wash, or to purify. The, the, the scriptures say purge me with hyssop. Y'all see that? It say purge me with hyssop. So if you take a bath, okay, and you put some hyssop in the water, this will change your energy around a hundred percent. Somebody say, how you know? Because I did it. Because I done done it. So y'all need to take this, this, this cleansing bath, this oil cleansing bath, so y'all can change around some situations in y'all life. I'm trying to tell y'all how to do it. Okay? I can lead the horse to the water, but I can't make you drink. I can't make you drink. I ain't going to stay too long. But I just want to show you some of these things. Because some of y'all can go through these scriptures and put it together yourself and say, oh, okay, so this is how you can do a love ritual. This is how you can do a healing ritual. Come on, y'all. We got to wake up and be wise. Turn your Bibles to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 5 and 23. Yes, 1 Timothy 5 and 23. Let's see what the Bible say about wine. It's a lot of people, every time you say, oh, I'm going to just drink a little glass of wine. They turn their nose up at you. But I want to see what the Bible say about wine. 1 Timothy 5 and 23. It say drink no longer water. The Bible said drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. So what is this scripture saying to us? Come on and let's put it together. When you drink a glass of wine, I want you to hear me. When you drink a glass of wine a day, this is good for your stomach to fight off sickness in your body. This has been proven. And it is also proven that, that, that a glass of wine, listen to me, a glass of wine a day can help you live longer. I done talked to older people. I'm talking about in their 90s. My grandparents, they, done, they live to their 90s. Okay, almost close to their hundreds. And they always drunk a glass of grape wine a day. So this helps you to live longer. When people tell you, oh, you shouldn't even drink no wine. That's the devil. And make sure you drink you a glass of wine a day. Okay? So we can fight off these stomach infirmities and shit. We going on. I told you I can keep going on with these scriptures for days. For days. Because there's so many rituals in this Bible. So I'm not saying that the Bible is, is just a negative book. Okay, but they tricked us. And we got to know the trick that is play, being played on our minds. That's all I'm saying. I want to say this and I'm going to end it on this note right here. I said I'm going to end it on this note right here. I'm going to take it home. Folks been talking about the tree of life. I got to say this one right here. Folks been talking about the tree of life. I done got people who ask me this question about the tree of life. But I want to ask you a question. What is the tree of life? Yeah, that was a question for you. What is the tree of life? One of the things that the tree of life represents is 
It represents the herbs. I said the tree of life is the meaning of the herbs, the herbs of life, the herbs that brings healing, relief, and deliverance. That's the tree of life, these different herbs that we got out here today. So don't let nobody tell you that, that these rituals are evil or these rituals are the devil because it's just something that they don't know. There's so many rituals in this Bible. If y'all want me to, I'll come back and give y'all some more. I'll come back with a part two.